again, I'm Steve Theringer from the 24th Legislative District and wanted to talk a little bit today about ferries. There's been some discussion about that through this whole session and I just want to do a little bit of an update. Of course, ferries are very important to the northern part of my district, Jefferson and Clown County particularly. We depend on ferries for jobs, for services. It's also great access for the tourism activities on the North Peninsula. So ferries are important to us and as a lot of things in the state budget are facing fiscal challenges. As folks know, when we started this session, the governor proposed a ferry district that would have been a taxing district to manage the ferries and fund the ferries, and that was fairly rejected by the legislature. We didn't want to separate out the ferries from the rest of the state transportation system, and I think uh, all of us agree that the uh, ferries are as important and as an integral part of the transportation system as bridges and other roads, and to set up a special district to fund those seemed to be inappropriate. So we've been working on uh, basic effort to try and maintain services for the ferries so that we keep the number of runs that we have uh, across the Sound and in between Port Townsend and Keystone. And we've also been trying to figure out a way to get funding to build a third mid-sized boat to be able to provide backup. Right now there aren't any backup boats for the system and so we need to get capital dollars to build a new boat. What are some of the other changes that lawmakers are considering in terms of funding or changes to how the ferries operate? The governor has worked on an agreement with both management and labor to address some of the funding there. The bargaining units haven't signed off on that, but that would generate about $10 million annually on the labor side and about $10 million biennially on the management side. And so that's one piece of it. And then I think we're trying to look at, uh, there's been a number of capital investments that have been scheduled into the budget. So the combination of capital savings and uh, the savings on the employment side, both management and labor, we think will get us to a level that will backfill the budget so we can sustain services. If we look at the capital investments for the Department of Transportation over the last 10 years or so, we see that there's been a real increase in capital investment for the rest of the transportation system, while capital investment for the ferry system has remained flat over that period. And I think all of us, as I said earlier, really think it's important to consider the ferries as part of the transportation system, so we would like to see some mechanism to try and close that disparity between the capital funding for the ferries and the rest of the transportation system. What about privatization of the ferry system? There's been some discussion, in fact a bill did pass out of the House that would uh, set up a three-year period for management only to uh, meet certain performance standards and if management is not able to meet those standards then we would, uh, then there would be a trigger to go into a privatization of just management to meet the performance standards. I don't think anyone is interested in privatizing the ferry system, certainly the legislative caucus isn't, but people are frustrated in the legislature that the performance levels of the system haven't been meeting the standards I think that we would like to see. So this was kind of an attempt to set a timeline for those standards to be improved, those management performance standards to be improved. What is the capital vessel replacement account and do you support it? That is an option. As I mentioned, we're trying to both maintain service and uh, find dollars for a replacement vessel, a mid-size replacement vessel. So the capital vessel replacement account is funded with a ferry surcharge and with credit from the sales tax paid on ferry fuel that would go into this fund and then that revenue would be used to bond to build a new boat. So uh, that's one of the ideas that the ferry caucus has put forward to meet this capital need for a new boat. I support it. I think it maybe needs a little tweaking. We need to make sure that the, there's enough revenue there and it's a guaranteed revenue to be able to bond to build a new boat. But uh, I think it's a, it, it's a, it's a, could be a positive solution for the capital need. How important is the ferry system to your district in particular? 
It's integral to our system. I mean, we're on the peninsula, certainly in the north part of my district, but I think people that need to get across the water for services and goods depend on the ferry. I think there's a number of folks that use the ferries to get to their jobs in Seattle or in Everett, and so a dependable ferry system is really important. On the coming the other way, making sure that uh, you know visitors can come to the peninsula and visit the tourist attractions that we have there, I think is crucial for, uh, for those businesses. And if constituents have any questions about ferry service or legislation, what's the best way to get a hold of you? Yeah, certainly as the legislature tries to solve this problem, don't hesitate to contact my office uh, either by email or phone and on the ferry issue or any, as, any of the budget issues that we're going to start focusing on. The revenue forecast comes out on March 17th, and that's when I think a lot of us will be sharpening our pencils to try to figure out how to fill the gap between the projected revenues and our budget needs. So certainly don't hesitate to contact me in my office with your ideas, questions, as we work through these problems. Great. Thank you, Representative Theringer. Thank you.